thanks guys um for joining um yeah you guys i'm so sorry like my video look at it looks so blurry i'm just like what the hell it looks good to me to be honest I mean, like yeah. from here it looks I, like oh wow it's so not clear like it's so unclear yeah. just like, like it's not like a camera like a digital camera but like for a webcam it's clear okay yeah well guys i'm really sure about the you guys know i mean you can watch my videos so you know that i have a camera <laughs> You can do better. I can do better. I have a camera for yes. Anyway, yeah. So um, we're gonna be posting this on our channel. So yes, go follow her if you're watching this on my channel, and of course follow me if you're watching this on her channel. And don't forget to follow our Instagrams, like basically our social media. Going to leave the link below. So as you guys know, I'm Nay, and this is my <coughs> friend Esther, and um. Yeah, so we both went to the same college and we kind of like, you guys know, we do like videos on education, like study abroad, personal finance, things like that. So, I mean, if you guys have seen my video, you most probably have seen her video because like I said, every single time that I watch my video, her video is the next one that pops up. So, um, but yeah, so today's video is kind of like, I mean, as you guys can see a collab between the two of us and we're going to be talking about internships. Um, and how you can get one as an international student to the U.S. Now, one of the questions that um, international students or people who want to come to the States usually ask is like if they could get an internship, like is it possible or like how do you even get an internship and stuff like that. And I think that we can go over like, um, I guess, first of all, we can talk about our own experiences, yeah. right? And then we can then talk about like how to find an internship, like places to look at for like finding an internship. Everybody like you talk about like personally um if you are subscribed to my channel you guys would know well if you subscribe to my channel you would know that um i am in tech so basically into software development um so how did i get my first internship actually that's that's a very good <laughs> that's a very good question because this was how i got my first internship so what happened was i had actually joined computer science because if you guys know Oh, well, I have mentioned it in some of my videos. I am a double major in computer science and tech design. So I joined computer science pretty late. I actually joined computer science in my junior year. So basically, when people were like finishing, um, <laughs> like, you know, their major, that's when I was joining the major. So um, I attended a, what is it? Whatchamacallit? I attended NSB, which is National Society for Black Engineers. And you guys know, like, you know, I have also done a video where I talk about if you want to get internship, attend conferences, at least if you're in tech. I don't know how it works for science, but like if you're in tech, attend conferences. So um, I attended Nesby and I actually um, interviewed there for a Fortune 500 company, actually a Fortune 100 company. Um, I did so good on the behavioral, like the people, the person that interviewed me, he really wanted me to join. But by then, remember guys, I had just started um, as a computer science student. So even though I was in my junior year, I was technically a freshman because that was like my first class in computer science. So I didn't really know much um, when I did the interview, when it came to the technical part, like the coding part. Um, but for my behavioral part, it was good. So the guy told me like, if I could come back like the next year, you know, he would definitely be able to give me a job, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I mean, okay, cool. It was all fine and good. But I people actually went to that next week with the conference. They even got, um, they got jobs there. But again, those people had started come to science in freshman year, right? Um, so what then happened was after, so next week happens in March, right? And I was still taking that class as I then. By the time I was done taking the class, I passed the class, of course. And then it was May. Now it was around May. I want to say, I would say maybe ending of April, beginning of May. I think that's, I think school closes around like fifth May or about, I'm not really sure if I remember correctly. Yeah, oh, I about, think that's, yeah. You did the first, first week of May. Yeah. First week of May, yes. So I think it was like the ending of May, like the last week of May, right? That um, my other, my other major, we were doing a career fair. So I went to the career fair for that major, right? And then I was talking to this company and then they were looking at my resume and they were like, wait, you were also doing computer science? I said, yes. And they were like, oh, well, they're also looking for a software developer intern. Wow. And I was like, okay, I mean, cool. <laughs> like, yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. And then they asked me a couple of questions. Like it wasn't hard, hard, hard that I couldn't answer it. Um, 
And I just told them what I was learning in class and stuff. And they were like, yeah, like, okay. Then the next day, they took my number, actually. Then the next day, they called me and they were like, oh, um, they, I think it was $13 an hour. They were like, it's $13 an hour. Um, how is $13 an hour? Now, I rejoice. And let me tell you why. Because Berea pays you only $4 an hour, okay? Yeah. So I was really right. like, I was like, oh my God, wait, $13 an hour? Yeah. But then... I was like, okay, cool. But then I started calculating it and I was like, okay, are you guys going to give me housing? Yeah, exactly. And Even expenses, you have to pay. Yes, that. yes. And they were like, oh, that they don't provide housing. And I was like, okay, but like, <laughs> honestly, so you know this thing they talk about like negotiating um, uh, like your salaries and everything? Yeah. People really get scared when you say, oh, negotiate, because they're like, oh, like the Marine said, the offer and everything. Right. But that was literally my first offer. And at that point, I just wanted something that I'll be able to survive on. Right? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to like do an internship and be struggling. So yeah. I did, I wasn't even thinking like, oh, the Marine side of like, I didn't even know like at that point I was negotiating. All I just okay. wanted was I need money to be able to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the thirteen dollars an hour I was like, uh, "Are you guys gonna give me, you know, house?" And then they were like, "Okay, no house." And then they increased it to like, uh, I think it was sixteen dollars. Oh wow! They were like, yeah, so they were like, "Since we're not providing housing, we can give you like sixteen dollars an hour." I was like, "Okay, okay, I can do that." And then for transportation, they would be taking me and bringing me back. Oh, so wow. yes, so basically that was that was kind of like how I got my first internship mm-hmm. and. I joined the company and I loved it. Like I loved it so much. I learned a lot in that internship. Oh, wow. Like yeah. I learned so freaking much. You learn so much in internship that when you like come back to school, you're like, what is this? Yeah. Like, what is this? Like, what is this nonsense that we're doing in school? Because yeah. the internship teaches you so much. Yeah. But yeah, so that was how I got my first internship in tech. Yeah. So for me, it's weird because the internship I'm doing right now is my first official internship that I've done. But it's not mm-hmm. the first I've gotten into. And now the reason why it was like that is because, you know, international student struggles. Every time I, yeah, the first Girl. time I, yeah, the first time I try to get an, in, I try to do an internship, I, I got accepted. In- it was in Houston, like really amazing internship. Oh, I remember yes. when you told, you didn't do that internship? Do it. Because first COVID happened. I couldn't do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because oh. the first time that COVID happened, I couldn't do it. The internship was unpaid. So, and then Berea was going to cover it, right? But then COVID came and Berea was like, well, we're not funding anybody's internship because we don't want you to go and get COVID. You know, yeah. and I mean, my internship too was like, you know, we're not even sure if we're going to hold it anymore because of COVID. And so they, that canceled. This was after doing interview, everything. It was oh like, my, so, yeah, I remember telling me yep. about that like you were exactly. so excited yes last year summer i was supposed to do the same internship again because i had to literally reapply go through the whole process again for the same internship got accepted next thing what happened my passport expired, and expired. oh my ridiculous yes and that one was so hurtful because it's like now it's not them it's not covid it's me like it's not like my fault but something that like I literally cannot control and all that and so I had to tell them literally like month like a month to the internship like oh I couldn't come and so the reason I'm talking about it is just to show that like I you know even though this is my first internship like I'm doing off campus it didn't it didn't have to be like it didn't have to be my first one it could have been like my like Your third I, I don't one. think I would have had to do this because I would have yes. the experience I'm trying to get now yeah but anyways, how I got that internship was actually I found it on the internet. So for me, I was trying to look at a place like I'm trying to leave Kentucky. I just need to be out there, you know. And so I looked into wildlife. Um, I was more interested in wildlife, but it didn't really matter if it was wildlife. It was more focused on um animal experience or pre-vet because I'm a biology major. I graduated, mm-hmm. I'm, well, I'm graduating with a biology degree. And so I'm biology pre-veterinary medicine. And so I just wanted an um, internship that would give me some experience related to that. But I really wanted to do wildlife. And so I was kind of like looking at wildlife and I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. And so I found the one in Texas. I just looked online, wildlife internship for college students. You just mm. have to search different keywords that kind of relate to what you're looking for. You can say pre-vet internships, wildlife 
wildlife internships or um, animal experience internships you can easily find these internships on like indeed as well indeed linkedin yes. or just like google search for me it was google search that actually helped i just found the link and so i found it i saw the requirements some of them are just like oh just your resume two reference letters some don't need reference letters some mm -hmm. need transcripts but the ones that i applied to always needed reference letters and so i had to like get reference letters from my professors and i had to choose professors that really knew me well and also like where into like for example i chose biology professors and then one like work supervisor so kind of like we want that balance academic and work experience like supervisors mm. so i applied and then i got in even at the time i applied to like another one in california at the time was it no florida i think it was like an aquarium or, like an animal you know um, care aquarium and uh, a pre-vet aquarium and stuff like that where they allow you to intern and i got into that one as well but that wasn't my top like choice just because of like what i was looking to do so i chose the texas one and they had to interview me they interviewed me i think it was i can't re re i can't recall i think it was a phone like over the phone interview if how I intense like how hard and intense was yeah the so based on my experience with like that one and then this one i'm currently doing in california it was kind of formal so i mean i said formal sorry informal it was kind of informal because they will give you like a time you know you set an appointment everything but the way they ask you questions it's or maybe it's also the way i perceived it like it, i made it like it, it felt like i was just talking to someone about what i wanted to do so it wasn't like oh you have to like be serious and stuff they were laughing they were like pretty chill with me and so they tried to make me comfortable so it wasn't hard they would just ask questions like what's your experience with like animals what kind of animal experience do you have how much experience do you have what classes have you taken that are relevant to the internship and in some of the ones that i applied to like you would write like a cover letter kind of thing so i kind of like had to write a cover letter kind of thing where i already explained some of these things but then they also want to ask you over the phone to for you to explain um so i did all of that yeah yeah okay so sorry i had to call in but so okay. is it how competitive are these internships and is it like so your experience of this one being informal is it the way like other um i guess vet um internships are like other vet interviews yeah actually? yeah generally it's like it's it's a hit or miss so the time to get the really formal ones like i had the ones where i had to do a video but i didn't end up doing those internships so yeah sometimes it's like really like formal and sometimes it's more relaxed so it depends on the organization like the organization i'm in right now it's yeah. um like it was more informal which really really was helpful like we just she called me on the phone and the questions are serious questions but like they don't i don't know they just didn't make it seem like Oh my god we're quizzing you you have to come and tell us all this skills and how do you do this um like for specific procedure and things like that and there wasn't really anything like that so i don't know how it's going to be like for other like maybe science fields but like in like my own field in pre-vet and i think even in medical like pre-med internships there's not usually a lot of because especially if you're coming with like minimal experience they're not expecting you to know like everything yeah see so, it's not like that in tech like yeah at least from, skill based for from you guys. all of my experiences yeah. all of the interviews and when i say interviews i have i have done so like let me tell you i have applied when i was looking for internships my very first time i had applied to nothing less than 300 jobs oh my god just on linkedin just on linkedin i was also using indeed i was also using monster i was also using um whatchamacallit's glassdoor yeah like i was using all of these apps and i was also using google so in total i'm sure i've applied to like at least 500 jobs and this is just for one like in tech i know they say it's like an average of 250 applications will get you one job it is oh, so competitive wow. yeah. like because everybody and your mama wants to get into tech yeah that's the thing in in the like because i think tech is very it's kind of narrow in the sense of tech is tech which you get like yeah. so there's not a lot of different parts of it i think if i put it that way compared to like biology there's so many things you can do 
in like the field of biology so even though somebody is trying to go into life sciences there's so many things you're focused on not a lot of people are going to be vets not a lot of people you know even if you want to become doctors there's so many like places that it can apply to and stuff so i think for example human medicine would probably be more competitive than um pre-vet vet school itself is more competitive than medical school just because we have fewer vet school vet school yeah but when it comes to like the experience like seeking the experience itself it's not usually as competitive just because like i feel like because it's not as like the way they like they screen people for example somebody could know a family member or like a professor or somebody that's like oh i know this vet clinic i'll refer you to them and then that way they just get you know <laughs> No. So yeah, yeah, it happens. No. Like, it doesn't work like that. Actually, in tech, um, yeah. in tech, if you have it easy, you're having like maybe two or three interview rounds. Mm-hmm. No more. An oh, average yeah, interview yeah. round is like six. Like you see, all of these companies, all these big, big five companies, Fang. You know the companies I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Those companies, you're having like six or seven interview yeah. rounds. You do like behavioral. You do like two behavioral. You do, you do like th- three coding challenges. Yeah. Um, like. It takes, I think, um, I was talking to a friend, which is why those companies, I don't even try to, like, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just like, shutting out for I don't have that energy. Kid. Like, it's not even a job. <laughs> yes, I was talking to my friend and she applied to one that took six months. Like, the interview process no took six way. months. So the thing is, like, as you're interviewing, you're probably going to be interviewing, at least when I was looking for internships and even jobs, I was interviewing at least maybe like, I was interviewing with maybe like, 20 companies at the same time yeah, like yeah. every day is like oh i have an interview today by 10 a.m tomorrow i have an interview by three yeah. next tomorrow I have, it, no. it was so intense yeah. like tech is very intense traffic <laughs> there's a huge traffic jam there you have a free vet yeah. like vet industry it's not really like that like you can meet competition especially when it comes to like okay for example depending on what skill they're looking for in the internship if your skill isn't up to that like skill level maybe like they want a student that can already do like sub q or like whatever then they might not take you because there were internships that i didn't get into but the thing is that you will most likely always find something for your level That's, yeah yeah even if you don't know anything like as long as you're in school like you're learning and you're on the path like usually you can still find something like for your level so yeah. i think that's kind of where you just have to like look for like what the requirement is for like different internships and kind of know what you're looking for and then another way that i wanted to say that like you know it's very good to find internships is especially in like the stem i don't know i mean science, science? Like, yeah field is through like your professors like they always have connections in terms of like mm-hmm. where students have gone before. Like for me, there were so many places that they recommended for me. The only reason I didn't go to those places was because me, I already saw what I wanted. So I'm like, yeah, thank you for letting me know. But like, you know, but there were good places. Like for example, there was one pause. Pause is like one of the biggest like wildcats organizations. Like they rehabilitate wildcats. And I could have applied to pause because some Berea college students had been there so my professors were like you know try this place try that place try this vet clinic uh students have gone there a lot so that means that they're more likely to take you to research from, you at, yes, yes. From, the, yeah, from your school so mm-hmm. talk to your professors because they were more likely to know places that are more likely to take students from that from your school yeah the center of like your school oh school yes they help yes career centers help yes what i wanted to say actually was i think for science um you guys already have like a base like first of all yeah look at the building they built for you guys <laughs> the best building on campus that's what it's the best exactly the yeah. the like i remember the when they finished building the science building and i went yeah. into it and that whole pendulum thing was going yeah was like, wow it was and very then, futuristic and then look at computer science building like it, that the very is that, to me like computer science building is next is right next to that new building like look at computer science building it's so old yeah. like i think that's one of the oldest buildings on yeah. campus I think so that I th- they, they need to, yeah. Yeah, I so I think, so the thing is, I think, um, you know, you talked about how, like, your professors, um, they know, like, they know places where you can go and intern. The thing with computer science is, okay, so first of all, Bureau started in, I don't know when Bureau started, maybe 18 something, I'm not very sure. I think it's 1855, I think. 
Probably, you're probably right. I think if I'm not mistaken. I think so because yeah. I think I read that in that your booklet. Yes, thing. so. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. I think that was when Bira started. Now, if I'm guessing correctly, that's probably around the time when like science also started. Mm, in- like really was gaining. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It started early, right? Yeah, it started really early. There were a lot of people, like, you know, the scientists coming up, Galileo and all that. Now, people. see, computer science started in Berea in 2002. Uh, yeah, 2002, 2000. Yes, the professor, I'm not going to call her name because. Of mm-hmm. course, this is YouTube. But yes, the professor okay, who is like the major itself. Okay, I get what you're saying now. Yeah, the professor, like who is like the chair, the head professor or something in computer science in Berea right now. She was the one. She was actually a math professor. And then at least the story I heard, I'm not sure how very accurate it is, but that's like the story that every computer science student was told. Um, they say that in, in 2002 or thereabouts, um, was it 2002? Was it? Yeah, it was 2002. She went on what it was called, um, she went on a sabbatical leave. She was a math professor. And then she came back, like, was it the next year or two years later or whatever? And she opened computer science, mm. which I think was like in 2004. So, uh, and now after she opened it, people were not even going in. I think it was around like 2010, 11, 12. When tech that started it, really booming. Yes, it started yeah. getting traction. So I have, you guys might have heard me in my other videos. I talk about a friend that helped me a lot in computer science. I mean, I don't really say her name because she doesn't like it, but yes. So that was also around the period that she took, like she got into computer science. She was like, not really a pioneer, but she was like among the pioneers of computer science. Mm -hmm. So now you can see how early computer science is in Berea. So it's like, even though the professors might know some people and be like, oh, well, we have a student, but it's not... It's not, it's not as, as deeply far, written. Like, yeah, that's yes. true. Yeah, definitely. Science, pro- Berea probably started with science. Like, in yes. The, as one of the majors. Like, yes. Science, yes. Computer science, just like, a lot of computer science students actually are the ones that hustle for themselves. Like, Make you know how easy. you hear, oh, this yeah. student's working in Microsoft, this person's working in Apple, this person is working uh, in Amazon. Yeah. We are the ones that hustle. Like, even, you know, the intention, the, what you want to call it, the conference I was telling you about, Nesby, mm-hmm. I was the one, my friend, the girl I told you about, that told me to go into computer science. She was the one that told me to go for that conference. Mm-hmm. I was the one that started that. Like, I was the one that called mm-hmm. another friend of ours. You probably know her. She also does YouTube here. She also does. You, oh, you I know who you're uh, yeah. <laughs> I was the one that called her. Okay, so the part I wanted to say, like, kind of like, because for you, you've experienced the whole thing with, like, doing an internship and then gaining something from it. Like, uh, sorry, like a permanent position from it. I haven't gotten there yet because I'm still doing my internship currently. And then the other research that I did in Berea was just in Berea. So I'm not trying to get no permanent position <laughs> there. Yes. So kind of like how, like, how do you think, what were the things that you think helps you with retaining a position? Um, at least I know in tech, um, usually, as long as you do good on your internship, they always offer you like a return offer. Yes, that's usually the way it is in tech. I, it might not be the way it is in science, but that's usually yeah. the way it is in tech. Actually, my first internship with the first company, um, they offered me a return position, but um, I was going to go back there. Like, I love, oh my God, I loved it so much. It was a very small company. It was actually... um. It was family owned. Yes. Okay. It was family owned. They only had many companies that you usually tend to enjoy. Yes. They only had like, I want to say maybe 100 employees. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love my teammates so much. Like, I loved the company so much. But um, I wasn't sure they were going to uh, file for HRMB for me. Oh, and yeah. Yes, you guys know what Hedgehog is. I'm going to, again, insert the video here where I made, um, where I talked about it, which you guys know is like, you know, the work visa for you to keep working in the US. So, um, yeah, I wasn't sure if the company was going to do Hedgehog before me. But the mistake I made was I just assumed. Yes, I just like, I was just like, oh, well, I don't think they're going to, because like everybody there was domestic, like nobody there was international. So I was like, yeah. well, I don't know, but then they involved. And then I was like, yeah, well, I'm just going to go to the, company I am right now, which is like a very, very big company, like a Fortune 500 company, um, which I love too. 
but yeah but i was like okay let me just go to this one and yeah so um that was also when i went for another conference actually i went for grace hopper so the first in oh, the yeah. first um one was nesby the second one was uh, i went to grace hopper and that was where i got um my second internship which then actually i got it as a full-time position oh, but wow. what then happened was um i uh I had taken an extra semester. Um, so I couldn't graduate the time like I was supposed to graduate. So since I had taken an extra semester, I had one more summer to work. So I was like, instead of you know doing this, let me just ask them. So I asked them, they said, yeah, they could give it to me as an internship. So I then came as an internship because I told them I was staying an extra semester um, on campus. Um, I then came to that company um, and did an internship. And after my internship, I also got it as a full-time position. So um, yeah, that was how. So yes, at least in tech, I don't know about science. In tech, it's yeah. like, it's very, very normal. Mm-hmm. Actually, a lot of times before you, you don't even apply for jobs. Usually a lot of they times offer. internship just converts to an wow. Yes, that's yeah, I, how yeah. it is in tech. I think in science, like, doesn't always happen like that. Like, sometimes you could do well, but like an internship is an internship, and it's just like that's wow. it. But like you could be like, yeah, bye. <laughs> like exactly, like you can build a good reputation for yourself because usually, like, I think it's just because of the way things are designed. Okay, for example, like a lot of times when students like say for example pre med or like pre vet when they do an internship, they're not even usually looking to really work. If you get what I mean, because with like computer science, now most times when you're done, you're done. Like people can do masters, but it's like rarely immediately you'll like go to grad school, yeah. or, like, school or something. So I think that's because of, that's the reason why the like sciences one is like like that the pre field. It's usually like you're just coming here to learn. It's like a, an educational program, and then so once mm-hmm. you learn, you build like a good like reputation for yourself. But I think the way it then works in that area is in the future maybe you then become a vet and you know that company that was a vet clinic let's say they could end up in the future employing you you could go back there because i've read stories of like i'll go to like a vet clinic's website and they're like oh this doc our current veterinarian was an intern so many years hey, back. after you've done well for yourself then yeah. the no, there's not really a lot of their sponsoring you for anything or anything like yeah you don't really get that but then I've heard like in medicine, like human medicine, some companies will sponsor you for medical school if you're going to agree to come back for a number of years. It's rare, but I've heard that it happens. I don't know how. Is it for international students or domestic? Because that's Fairly, probably more international, uh, more domestic. More domestic, yeah. It's expensive, have... so they yeah. don't want to responsibility for you. I did a video with Favor. I'm going to insert it here. Um, that video talked about like the process of medical school for an international student in the US. And I think she said it's less than 1% of international students that are It's admitted. very rare. Like you almost cannot, it's hard to get in. And so that's the thing, even this position and this opportunity I'm seeing is even rare to like find it. It's not that common. It's very rare and it's mm-hmm. most of the domestic students that get it. Um, but like, for example, like you still have cases where you can still retain a position. Like in my internship, I feel like if I really want to stay, like maybe for a gap year and work, I think if I do well, they can retain me. Like, mm. but it's not, it's not promised. It's not, it's not an expectation. It's just, it could happen. Like it's not as common as in tech. I feel like that's where most people get their jobs. Yeah. But yeah. In, in science, I don't really think like that. And also like the other fields, if it's not pre, maybe you're just a biology major, a chemistry major, and you're doing research, like a research program, you can usually like, you would usually be able to retain like a position after maybe your research is like really good. Like you're really good at doing research and stuff. So maybe after you graduate, you can come back to have like a research assistant, a research assistant position, kind of like with Vanderbilt, they do that a lot. Yeah. Students. Like those that do the um, undergrad research program, some of them come back after they graduate before they go to medical school to be research uh, research assistants. So you have it, but usually it's not like as much as an expectation as it is in tech. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, okay, some people might think, because I just thought about it, some people might have questions about like CPT, like, do you have to do anything extra to like get CPT? Okay. But it's pretty, pretty straightforward, really. Okay. Um, yes. So for CPT, it's 
yes, it's straightforward. Like all you have yeah. to do is just get your internship, yeah. um, get the job, go to your international, like your DS or your designated uh, school yeah. official, um, go to him or her. They're going to sign, they're going to give you a new I-20, yeah. which is going to be like the, the company you're going to work on. And it's going to say like how That's many, right. I think how many hours, how much, I guess how much you're paid. Yeah, if you're getting um, paid, and then months, the, the time frame. The timeline, yes. yes. And that's all. And then that new I-20 is just what you're going to use and you're going to give to your employer on the first, I think the first three days um, of your job to show that like you're legally approved to work mm-hmm. there. So yes, um, you don't really have to do anything much yeah. for CPT. Where you have to do something per se is OPT. <laughs> <laughs> story for another day <laughs> no i need to that story has to be a little because like yeah so that was a very bad experience for me like I'm, I'm no with no no but yeah so for cpt cpt is um i can't remember what it is but opt is practical training i think okay yeah cpt during, like, during your like during, during your yes during, during when you're in school then opt is optional practical training which is when you're out of school so um, I hope that kind of helps you guys to understand, you know, when we say CBT yeah. and OPT. Yeah, so it's not a big deal at all. It's just get your internship. That's that's the main thing. <laughs> yes, just get your internship. Um, and then of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. If you're not subscribed, yes, I don't you know where you're doing. Like and subscribe. I don't know what you're doing if you're not subscribed because it's like, how do you come back? You come back, keep watching videos, you know, subscribe. But yes, oh anyway. <laughs> No, actually, let me tell you. Someone even told me that. Oh my god, I just realized I'm not subscribed to you, but they have been watching. They've been watching. They've been watching. They've been talking to you. Right. Right. I have to tell them. Are you, are you subscribed? Like, oops. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, I know that was a mistake, but like, that's a <laughs> cost. Sure. Mistake. That's why we're telling you now. Yes. But um, <laughs> yeah. If you guys also have like more questions, make sure to drop yeah. it in the comment section. If you guys want more collabs. Well and be willing to answer any questions as well. Yeah. And we'll see you guys in another video. Bye.